Thank you. So, Neil is here. He will talk to us about the status of PPA. So, please welcome him warmly. Thanks very much. Um, I hopefully, Vic, you can hear me. I guess that's coming through the mics. Who knows? Excellent. Um, a slight misnomer. I'm going to do a brief intro to PPAs, but then I'm going to um, hand over to our lovely FTP team and we can work out a, uh, a bit around there. This is also, the, I think, the largest boff I've ever sort of given. So um, <laughs> no, not exactly this small round table event that, that I was trying to do. Apparently, um, PPAs are might be quite popular or something. So, oh, it's me. No, I'm, I'm sure it's not. Um, so, a, a brief sort of overview of, sort of timeline. So, PPAs have, as an idea, have been around for a long time. I remember in uh, DevConf 11 in Banja Luka, we got together with everyone and we decided, yes, we're going to do this. This is how we're going to do it. It's going to be excellent. And then roll on a few years because everyone gets busy. And in 2013, um, Jörg posted a lovely posting to Debian Devel Announce. That's the URL. And we said we're going to have them by the end of the year. And now it's 2015. So this has been something that has been a long time coming, and it's something that, that's appreciated. But hopefully, by the end of this talk, we'll have a much better idea of where we are and what's left to do. So for, I mean, put your hands up if you don't know what PPAs are about and never heard about any of this. <laughs> Bdale and other troublemakers around. Okay, right, so <laughs> PPAs um, are the sort of why of it is it's a way to create, build, and distribute packages really easily. So ideally, there is less constraints on having to upload to unstable or experimental. And it ensures that the, the main suites, which uh, in our terms is suites are um, bits of the archive that you upload to, and it makes sure that they're consistent and, they're, and that the integrity of them is maintained. Additionally, for one of the sort of PPAs we're looking at, it helps manage our legal liability risk. So if Debian is distributing something, then we need to be make sure as a project that we're okay to do so, that we're not going to infringe on anyone or breaking licenses, etc. Um, so it's a way to reduce the load on, um, on the project in making sure that happens. Um, so most importantly, when I say PPAs, it's not like Ubuntu PPAs. I want to make that quite clear. This is something that is different, but we've also tried calling them developer repositories, but I'm not sure. Hmm? Bike, sheds. bike sheds. Apparently, we should call them bike sheds. So, so, so these, these are now um, personal bike shed archives, something like that. Just yeah, bike sheds. Oh, we can just call them bike sheds. So what do we think about that? Right. Excellent. So this is why I like a boff. So the new name for PPA is just bike sheds now. So you can store your own bike sheds. You can put bikes in that bike sheds or just gardening equipment. Yep, excellent. So these are now called bike sheds. Fantastic. Um, and so, so the, these developer repositories are, are something different. A lot of the comments I've had when I've been talking about PPAs has been, oh, please don't do that. That's going to be horrible. You'll be full of all sorts of random stuff by people who don't know how to make Debian packages, and it'll be a disaster. But where going to be, uh, approach it differently. So there's two main streams we're looking at. One is um, PPA main and PPA ext. PPA main is a, essentially your own little version of um, experimental, but it could be built against um, different suites. So it's, things have to go through new checks. They have to pretty much fit the same standards as they do for the main archive. Um, so yes, that includes new processing but it's a way to just make it a lot easier for you to, to do various things. PPA ext is a slightly broader version of that. So um, they're sort of external to the archive and it's not integrated in the same way. They don't need to follow that full set of rules and new processing, et cetera. Um, and importantly here with PPA ext, the maintainer who creates it have to agree to a terms of service, terms of conditions, and any content is the responsibility of the maintainer, 
not of Debian. That's where it lies here, because, because we're not going to check it, we're not going to do new checking, then Debian's not going to take the liability for, for license compliance. Um, let's see what the next slide is. So, yeah, as mentioned, this is for Debian developers only. So uploading and possibly Debian maintainers. Um, so working on that, on, on how we can do it. But it's, it's for people who already know how to make packages. It's people who've been accepted into the project in one form or another. And it's for them not just a wide, anyone could create anything in the world. And the main people involved with, um, with creating these uh, PPA systems have been FTP masters, WannaBuild, and DSA. So I've done very little work, in fact, almost none, apart from creating a set of slides for everyone and creating a huge boff to, to try and push this. So any sort of credit definitely goes towards the FTP masters and, and these teams up here. Um, so having a look of where we are now, really, I'm basically going to hand over to the FTP masters and, and they can sort of let us know what the state is, what we have next, and and if anyone can help and where we can go and sort of time scales and, and, what, and what's coming up. So I'm sure there's a mic around for you somewhere. Uh, okay. Um, you should all have just been in the buff one hour before when we talked about ducks. There was this a uh, pretty big topic too. Um, the basic status is that we mainly need an interface for the developers to actually create all of them. <laughs> we have the infrastructure in Duck ready for dealing with multiple archives, which all can have different suites inside. So the, and they can be stored wherever on FTP master. So every PPA could have their own space where they are, so the files don't override each other and stuff. What we need is a commando interface for the developers to actually work which will end up being duck comment files to upload, similar to dpart or dcut am or something, where you have a signed comments file to upload, and inside that comment file you say, create a PPA based on stable, put those list of packages with those versions inside, and the fingerprints A, B, and C are allowed to upload into that PPA. Then possibly having a comment to copy the PPA back into the suite, like if you have created one. It's okay. It's just apple juice. <laughs> okay. Um, a comment to copy the contents back into the original base suite where you have been based on. Like if you have something from unstable to prepare a transition inside, you had an own suite for it, and now you are finished with your transition, and it's all ready and built and stuff. Then you just go and say, copy it back into unstable. It's doing a few version checks and stuff, so that no new version of your libraries have been uploaded or something where you would need to build again. And then it takes it over and then some way to remove those. So what we need there is the exact definitions how the comment should look and then some duck tool to actually implement them, which is mainly a coding work. So in case you want to help, it's Python programming. That's where we are currently. When we have that in the archive, we need DSA and the WannaBuild people work together because every PPA should probably be built on a series of architectures. So WannaBuild and then all the different buildies need to learn about the new PPA and need to be set up that they have change rules and all the triggering from Duck into WannaBuild and the buildies goes automatically. I can't say anything on the buildies, so I have no idea there. Yep. So, okay. So about, uh, I will also stand up because otherwise I'm st standing with my with the, with the back to most people, which is not so nice. So for the build demons, um, yeah, um, there are two different things to be, to, be, to be said or done. The first is a bit hard to get the code really in place if we don't have a suite we could try on. So I'm hoping to see first, uh, first bike sheds uh, very soon, uh, so that we can try on them. Uh, it's much easier to try instead of doing it theoretically. The other is, we already have um, 
uh, change to some Debian where we build packages on and only takes a newer version than necessary. We, for example, do that for backports. So if you have backports or for experimental, we always uh, build from the base suite and just add additional packages which are needed from the specific sources. So we have dynamic source list which, which gets updated. So we have one change root, or one yeah, tar file, which contains a change root for unstable experimental. It gets unpacked, it gets additional source lists added, and then it gets uploaded, uh, or packages get built and then uploaded. So I think we have lots, or most things are in place. However, there will be some very interesting things, how to get it in the database, how to get the data from one build to the build demons, and I think we will deal with that when we have examples uh, to work on. So it would be good, I think, for, for, from a Wanna build side to have uh, one or two of those archives available, even if they are created by hand by you, or, so we can play with them. Well, currently there would be the data archive, which we are setting up for data Debian packages, and the new debug stuff, which would be a play archive. It's a bit different than the actual usage, but the bases are the same. Um, well, as, uh, otherwise, yeah, we, we will tell you as soon as we have something. I think it's important that we really have the same, let's say, data structures or paths are identical or the variables in the paths are the same place as they will be in the future so that we could get it uh, into one build. And yeah, um, how, about how we do that uh, will also be in the in, uh, next interesting discussion. Uh, by the way, if someone wants to help there, uh, one build is, uh, is Perl-based, so. <laughs> <laughs> but both are code. Yeah, we are getting less ugly over time, but same here. It's all historical yeah. code. You always add and add and add. So at some point, it gets interesting. <coughs> um, yeah, we have a few more coding things than just the duck comment files. We also <coughs> need ways to only rebuild the indices for only those um, archives and suites that actually got touched. Currently, we are just rebuilding everything where it's possible something could have been done which means not the actual released are here, not the actual released suites, like stable, old stable and stuff. We don't touch them unless we force it. Everything else is rebuilt, which takes a lot of time, and if we add a Dotson or something PPAs, that would be bad. There's another point where we could need some help if you want to program a bit. Resounding oh. silence. Good. And one question that I got earlier outside here, so let me repeat it, is if the PPAs are just for unstable or experimental, no, they are not. You can base them on any existing suite in our main archive. So you can have something for old stable, for stable, for whatever. And so you could do your own backport suite for your own package and have unstable, blah, old stable, blah, and whatever. Have the libraries put in and then just build it all against that. Is that recursive? Can you do PP can you do bike shed on bike shed? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> if we define. Yeah, sure, sure, it just makes it I don't see a big problem technically from it. Yeah. Because in the creation area you just say take from that. So we could actually make it free to take from wherever. Yeah, I, I, I think the interesting question is in that, ca in that case, how to configure the sources line, because then you could have basically a more or less indefinite list of options. And then, so basically, which package version do you take? I mean, we have working code for apt of aptitude to decide with two different uh, sources where to take, take the best package from. So if you want to make it indefinite, or at least more than two versions, I'm happy to take in up code some of the uh, rights. So I think there was a question at the, at the back there. I think there's a microphone behind you. <laughs> oh, no, that's the audience one. So um, will the PPA main stuff hit uh, also the mirrors then, the public, public ones, the official ones? Or will that be hosted somewhere else on Debian infrastructure? Um, the plan was to put it on a different network and outside. Because many mirrors are already loaded with our one and a half terabytes, which we currently have. So when a PPA main is created, you're saying base on unstable, for argument's sake. Does that mean this unstable state at the moment of creation is the basis of the PPA, or that new uploads to unstable will get reflected in that PPA? 
bike shed. <laughs> yeah, Blue. I, I think we can just make that an option. It would be an option that you can have your packages that you have inside updated whenever they are updated and unstable. Have it as an option as a suite table and you say, yeah, I want that. And then whenever a new library, whatever is uploaded, you get it in your, and then you need to see if your stuff is still working. If you don't want that, you say, I don't want that because I want the state of as, as of now. Ansgar, want to come here? What about Binanim use? Uh, is there anything planned to allow regular developers to bin a new packages in their own PPAs? Is that possible at all? Or will we have to do no change source uploads? Um, I, I will first would like to go back on what I wanted to say about your comment about automatically the building the packages, because I think at least uh, at the current moment we don't have any code in place which could do the same in Unstable, which I'm quite, uh, quite sure a few teams would really um, prefer it if, if we only, if only build, but build, automatic build the right packages again if something has changed. I think that would dis uh, decrease load of some of the teams. Uh, the other question is, well, in, in my, uh, let me put it this way. Mm, we currently we control the possibility to, uh, to, to write to, to Wanna build uh, by uh, basically by per architecture permissions. However, if you have write access, you have write access to all, which means you could see, for example, what is currently going on in security suites. So we don't want to have it set for everybody. I think for good reasons. I could imagine to go via comments that we got for, get from ducks that we got some mirrored somewhere and then we could work on that. That would, however, be a later stage. So I don't think we start with that uh, for the beginning uh, because I'm happy to get features implemented step by step and not wait ev uh, until everything is completed. Now I see that Ian has a question for some time. Oh, okay, someone is. Hi. Um, the question would be how do you um, do. Um, on a timely basis, do a PPAs expire at some point, or will they be forever on the FTP master or whatever server is located? I think we should offer a way that you can say, I need that PPA for so much time frame, and then it goes away automatically, or you can renew it. Otherwise, PPAs that are unused for time X, whatever, you may get a warning, and then it's cleaned up. Thanks. We cannot keep them forever. We don't have the space for it. After a while, it will get big. Okay, Ian, I think I saw you. <coughs> uh, so uh, are you using um, or expecting people to use the same? Are you expecting people to use the same um, version number namespaces in the main archive? Or um, are people expecting, so um, will it be expected that if you upload a version to the PPA, you might want to upload the same version to the main archive with different, you know, with different actual files? You currently cannot upload the same version. That would be rejected. If you want the version from the PPA to go over, that would be the copy way. Get my contents of the PPA back over. Duck does not allow two, two times the same version in different suites by upload. And I actually think that's really a good feature we should keep because it would make uh, things much more complicated. Uh, if you have bug reports with the, the same version means two different things, we shouldn't do that. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if we... If, at, yeah. I think if we would go and reread the really big mail, we have something... Oh, no, not now. It's really big. We have something written about the versioning with the PPAs and have some <laughs> way how we could do it already written inside. But it's a bit big in total. So pulling in yet another team, is Weasel around? Are we going to also hook this end into Snapshot? Um, I've talked to him later, and I think, I think he said that's a possibility to put it into Snapshot. And as he is in planning currently to possibly put the debug uh, archive into Snapshot too, and doesn't think that's a big issue, so I don't think PPAs are an issue in sizes. The debug archive is probably getting much bigger. And also, while well, I've still got the mic before I pass it on, which architectures are we thinking about building for? Those, those is that we have. Well, the PPS will support all those that we have, and the building part is over here. But I don't see that it... 
it should be in the priority lower than the main archive, but whenever there is, is some resources free, I think it should be able to build. Well, I, I fully agree on that. However, uh, yeah, I think we need to perhaps discuss how many meshes we need. I think all of also what's not. Exactly. We're going to have to massively yeah. well, build power if this is going to take off. Yeah, klar. I, in that case, the main archive should be the absolute priority before something else is coming. Well, I actually have concern to build this, can, this PPA on the same build demons than the one using for the archive because we control a bit less what's going to be uploaded there and it's a way that we can take control of the well, build demons. Well, now actually for PPA mains, we are controlling exactly what's uploaded there because it's only that which already went through new and all of those people that have keys in the key ring. PPA X, we will never put onto the normal infrastructure. So the external repositories where other people are taking the liability and stuff, they are not going onto the normal auto builder network or anything normal. But the PPA mains are basically what you have in the main archive looked at by the FTP masters and stuff, just different versions or different ways of compiling and giving it out to people. I think the, uh, I think the concern is that you can upload, but when you have a stolen key, you can upload malicious packages to a PPA and this is less likely to get noticed, but it can take over the build D daemon and inject <coughs> code into packages that end up in unstable. So that could be avoided if you use throwaway VMs for building, but we don't do that currently. And all, not all architectures support it, I think. And also, of course, uh, if you have the right uh, knowledge uh, nobody says that VMs are not, uh, as you can't escape from a VM. If PPA X is not going to be on any of the standard infrastructure, which I agree with, will it also have the version number restrictions? Uh, I think we lowered them. I would need to reiterate that in the part. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, we made it easy. We don't say anything about versions for PPAX, so we can define it for whatever. In that, I would really try to encourage you to um, keep uh, the, the, the restrictions the same so that we don't have double version numbers. Uh, at least that we can't have something on PPX which is in Debian. The other way around, I'm, I'm just thinking about whether we had, uh, open up interesting attacks paths to it, but yeah. <laughs> Is this also meant to be used as a general um, software distribution point where upstreams could build their packages? Like, could I move my Postgres packages there? If you are a Debian developer, then you can move them over there, so yes. That if, uh, yeah, if you provide a service for Debian users with Debian packages, with yours of them, then I don't see a big problem moving them there and build a Tor, a Postgres, an XFCE, whatever for different versions, like doing your own backports of them and have them on the main infrastructure, yeah. That's connected to the question how long the repositories are going to be there. For that, I, we would want to have it indefinitely. And the, 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 the question is if you well, want to use it as a development tool or as a release tool. At the least, it will die whenever we put the old suite over on archive, then it just, all the PPAs based on that will go away. So whenever we remove old, old, whatever stable and put it on archives, then the PPS based on that will go away too. Also to archive? Can do, I think. As, do. as long as DSA is giving us the space, then we can put that there. And for that, ask him to just buy more disk. <laughs> <laughs> so, so while the mic's running around, um, we've also got some other updates that, that we'll need to do, obviously. So we've got things like the BTS will need to know potentially about uh, PPAs and there's like the tracking.debian.org and, and a few of our other bits of infrastructure around. Um, so <coughs> we're getting there quite, quite well with, with some of this, but um, for it to essentially have the same sort of experience that everyone's used to when they deal with their packages and all the extra infrastructure around <coughs> is still something that we're doing. Um, so when we say we want to keep the versioning sensible, which makes sense. Are we just talking about source versions? Are we talking about binary versions as well? The use case being, for example, so if you've got the source package providing an alternate version of the binaries in Debian, so for example, the cross-compilers, at the moment, if you build it the other way, you get the same binary packages from a different source. Um, and 
I just wonder whether that would work in a PPA main or not, because that would be a sensible place to build them, but uh, if it would all explode, then we can't do that there. So how Dark currently works is that if you have a file with a given name, it has to be identical, and we cannot change that as we want to be able to copy files from PPA to the main archive, and we clearly don't want them to differ in that case. Okay, so it would have to be synchronized somehow to be different, yeah. So then about what I'm currently thinking about the version, I'm not sure if it's a good idea or not, is to, is to enforce that the, that the bike shit name is actually part of the Debian version of the package, which of course would make sure that we won't, can't have conflict, but of course makes it a bit more ugly if we cope with it next to unstable, but I'm not sure if it really needs it. But just as an idea. Well, that doesn't look nice for copying, and you still can have conflicts if you, um, as, as for the upstream tarball, because that doesn't include the Debian That's revision. The yes, we could have conflicts for the tarball, but not for, for the Debian version, which is actually built. So just as an idea. Yeah, I thought about that. We'll see. Maybe we'll try to enforce it. Okay. Probably for the external repositories, because there's the more likely to be conflicts if we have non-Debian uh, developers doing whatever they want there. So am I correct in assuming that this uh, uh, eventually just completely removes the utility of backports? Um, I'm not standing, I'm sorry. Well, backports is centrally maintained and you have a central policy behind it, but yes, in theory, everyone could just go and make their own. I have my package, I want a backport for it, and I have a suite here for stable. Because it seems to me it. like the usage model on backports is already pretty much that people are picking at the individual package level, <coughs> which seems possibly even finer granularity than the bike shed level. Well, actually, I, 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 I think it doesn't remove the necessary of backports because, well, on a lot of servers, I have backports included, backports out, out, uh, automatically not installed unless you explicitly say, I want this from backports. And so, yes, it, it, it's quite a very easy way to do it. And there's somebody who is who's t at least taking a look at security. So I think it's better than, uh, than individual bike sheds. So I, I agree with BDL that it could easily be used to implement backports in theory, um, but I definitely think having a single repository serving the function of backports is a useful thing because for most users who are not sitting in this room or of similar background, uh, it's a lot easier to follow instructions to install something from backports uh, than it is to add a new repository and uh, you know, it, it's, it's one command instead of a bunch. It's a one flag to a command even. So I think we usability is worthwhile. We have a backports mate, and I'm wanting to give a comment. Um, to some degree, uh, the, the name PPA contains something that backports does to, to somewhat better because a PPA is something personal and it's usually attached to a certain user, and if they are not willing to maintain it anymore or don't have the interest or motivation to, to continue with it, a handover to a different PPA from a different person would mean every user would have to change the sources list <coughs> entry for it. And with backports, you just hand over the maintenance of the package and it's still in the same place. So, there are definitely different use cases for that. Depending on how we lay out the URLs, you could actually hand it over in Debian. Uh, who can upload into a PPA main is defined by the list of fingerprints that are allowed for this PPA main, which could be just a whole key wing or a set of, a set of them. And then you could just say there are now other fingerprints that can upload and I take myself out and other people have it. And then you have a PPA master, someone who has created it, and giving that over to another one shouldn't be actually hard to do. So I was just thinking back to the comment that you made about how you were worried about the number of, pe the number of bike sheds and how much load this was going to put <coughs> on constructing index files. Are you intending that each bike shed 
is a full index based on the suite that it came from, even if it's uh, effectively a dynamically updating suite? Or are you expecting that bike shed's indices will only contain the packages that have been explicitly pushed to that bike shed? So I think it should behave like experimental in relation to unstable. So it's basically just a set of small packages. Otherwise, we'll just have to keep too much stuff around. Because, I mean, then creating a repository means copying the entirety of unstable, and that's pretty huge. But presumably, if you've snapshotted the suite that you're based on, then you're going to have to migrate things that change in your base suite. You need to migrate the old version into the bike shed before you complete the domination in the base suite. Um, um, not, not, it not depends on how far you go. You should probably look at the dependencies to keep them straight. If you have a straight dependency, I need that version and nothing else. And you haven't included that in your PPA, we can either just ignore that and whoever is using the PPA has lost and the P one who set up the PPA needs to make a better list of packages. Or we could actually be helpful and look at that and then copy the few needed packages over. <coughs> When you create it, you have a list of packages anyways that you should give, and then we probably can go from the dependencies. So now, now I have a question about, which, which you said at the very beginning that if you create a bike shed, you say, and these people should upload to. So is the bike shed then owned by someone, or, does, or is, is it then not related to an owner, or how is it done, and also, um, is there, uh, are there namespace policies on the bike sheds? I think we had something written there, but yeah, the one who creates it is the owner of it, master of it, whatever, and he can add fingerprints and stuff. Would be bad if everyone can just add fingerprints everywhere. And he can also say there is another one doing master for it. But, but there's only one master at a time, so we can't say there are four masters. Why not? Okay. Just ask about the implementation. I don't see a reason why we shouldn't have multiple masters. It's a list of fingerprints, like a list of fingerprints who can upload. I so definitely think it's, it's a good idea. Yeah. And the, and the namespace policy? Names of PPAs will indicate that it is a PPA. Probably, probably will use PPA dash something or similar. So PPA dash Icewiesel, PPA dash Tor, PPA dash Tor dash. Stable. So, so basically, like whatever comes after the dash is just uh, up to the person who creates it. And if, yeah. if, it's, if it's wrong, the FTP master will fix it. Yeah. Okay, any more questions? Oh, yes, there is one. So I, I want to support this for dgit push. Um, I think that's probably straightforward. Uh, talk to you about it later. <coughs> yep. Anyone else or are we done? There's food coming very soon, so not too long here. Possibly off topic, but if it's so easy to support PPAs in the BTS, can we have backport support in the BTS? Don't, don't we support it? No, currently not. Talk to the BTS maintainers. And by the way, I would, I would never be... Uh, so, no. <laughs> so, so We basically, cannot do it. We are not modifying the PTS. We I, are only I, doing duck. I, 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 well, I'm, I, is, is someone from, 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 B, from, from the BTS team here now? Um, otherwise, from the experience I had with playing with BTS, uh, when at the time a version tracking was added, I wouldn't, be, I, wouldn't, uh, I, I wouldn't support the statement that it's so easy. It could be, be easier these days. So are we expecting then to see support for this role through other sections of the project? Are we expecting, say, we might make CDs or live images or anything with, with bike sheds included? Is anybody yeah. Well, we are hoping for the black magic that those people maintaining those are deciding if it's actually worth for the parts of the project they are doing to actually do that. I don't see much use in creating CDs with, for example, Postgres on them, just to have 10,000 CDs with 10,000 different Postgres variants, or something like that. 
So I think it's up to the different people. So it probably makes lots of sense to have that in the tracker Debian org or something, and in the BTS, of course, yeah, the tracker might get pretty long. CDs are a worse example. So we've got, um, we've got about 10 minutes left, so uh, yep. Rhonda, then Andy at the back. From uh, from the point of view with the BTS, I talked with them uh, <coughs> when, when it last popped up, getting backports into the BP BTS, and the biggest blocking issue was the view of different maintainers for different branches, like the, the person taking care of the backport not being part of the regular uh, maintenance team from Unstable, and I see the same issue, even more uh, uh, issue for having PPAs in the BTS. So it definitely would need to be adjusted to have multiple different maintainers for different branches in the view for the BTS. So it sounds like a lot of work for the BTS, yeah. Um, I want to add a word of caution. You seem to be advocating PPAs or bike sheds for a whole lot of users. <coughs> Just be cautious that you don't end up fracturing mains so much that people wanting package X always pull it from PPA X. People wanting package Y always pull it from PPA Y. And as a result, main just gets so fractured, people don't bother to uh, push back in. Yeah, so um, there's, there's a few different ways you can do that. I've got my drums on. How's that? So that's better. Excellent. <laughs> don't, don't speak with your microphone muted. Um, so, yeah, the, the, there's a few different... Because this is being done by, by Debian developers as well, then there is an understanding that there's a few different scenarios you could use. So you could have those aggressive backports type things, um, but you could use it for preparing trans uh, transitions, for example. So you'd upload your bits, you'd make sure everything builds, and then only when you're happy that the entire transition is ready, you can then pull it into, into unstable that way. So it, it should make things a lot easier in that way. Um, I think basically we need to trust DDs to do that. Um, at the moment, they can build their own random stuff on people.debian.org, but putting it into, into, into the main archive so works quite well. We will definitely have a few PPAs that are long running and never go back into the main archive. Mm -hmm. But mostly from people, I've heard uh, about that already, that are maintaining the package in the normal archive anyways, and they are using those PPAs to provide backports for more versions than it's possible to pro provide on backports mm -hmm. Debian org, in a way. Uh, and with the current policies, so they can always have a uh, backport to stable or all stable with the latest version from unstable or something. Those will never go back into the main suite ever and will split out, but the main package will be still in unstable in those cases. Yeah, uh, then um, about maintainer thing we, we just discussed before. I think I, I think whenever someone uploads something to his bike sheds, he should of course have the maintainer package, uh, maintainer thing to himself, question mark, because otherwise the wrong person, might, or, well, if the original maintainer doesn't agree, of course, if the maintainer says, just uploaded it as, as normal, otherwise, yeah, I think the maintainer should be the set. The other remark we had before about the question, could we, you, from, from B-Dale, uh, could we use bike sheds instead of, let's say, backports? I would say, from a, from a user perspective, different, I, I don't think so. From a technical perspective, uh, I wouldn't wonder if we would one time use the same mechanics behind, but that's a totally different question. Okay, just a couple more questions now, as so we've got only a few minutes left. What keys are going to be used to sign bike sheds, particularly Xed bike sheds? The Xed one we haven't decided at all on. It's probably a new key or something for that. For the main stuff, as we are creating it from the archive, I don't see much of a problem doing the main key. Or worst case, we could create another key that is just signing the PPAs. Yeah, so uh, I was wondering about this uh, transition uh, scenario, if you're having multiple transitions at the same time, you need to NMU uh, stuff 
to pass that uh, transition, it, it's going to be in name conflict, I guess. I mean, it, the, the archive apparently doesn't allow it, so you're going to rebuild it in one PPA and you're going to rebuild it in the other one. How are you going to merge that? You're copying one transition into the archive and then the other transition has to rebuild again? Or? Well, so, so that's what happens when transitions get entangled, basically. Um, please don't do that. Talk to the release team. So if you're planning some of the transitions and you think there might be a, a, a sort of problem, or in fact, if you're planning a transition, go talk to the release team, basically. Hmm? How, sorry, I think that, how does the, P, how does the PPA help? Yeah, exactly. Why, so if, if you, uh, what you now say, you can just do it in the main archive. So, um, basically means that if there's a, if there's one of the libraries that's changed in an incompatible way in the PPA, you can um, make sure that all the reverse dependencies are all managed together and you don't end up with things that are uninstallable at some times and, and some not, not another. It provides a, a stable place to try and manage that transition. Basically, when you, when you do transitions, uh, it's oft, but not always the case, that, you, that some things are changing uh, and, and then you, see, you want to see, does it still work with the new ch changed stuff? So there it will help. Of course, it doesn't directly help the, as the build times and unstable. And one thing which that definitely will happen with bike sheets. With bike sheets, we will compile packages uh, and not use them because, yeah, there will be way more packages which are compiled and never used than we have uh, with unstable experimental. I mean, that's an obvious side effect. If we don't want that, we can't do the bike sheets. And we'll take okay, we have one more question and then it's time out. Okay. Um, normally, uh, most time of the day, I'm an ordinary Debian user and uh, sometimes I help other people to use Debian. And when I heard about Debian PPR, I say, oh no. And um, after that talk, I will sleep very better. No more nightmares anymore. <laughs> um, and I think the time between the first idea and now, I think it was used very well. Okay. One final question for me. When yeah. do we get them then? Pretty soon now, actually. Pretty soon now. We have all the comments ready. We could actually create PPAs by using completely manual comments, but it doesn't help if FTP masters everything, do everything manual. So we need the duck comments interface to implement them, and then we need the policies on removing them and stuff. So it's writing a few tools to implement the duck comments files to read them. So we've got literally one minute left. This had yeah. better be uh, down. Did 10 you actually seconds. study the pro technical problems, problems from the one build side? If you are going to say it's soonish ready? Well, if, if it's soon as ready, it's soon as ready from FTP master side, after Correct. that comes the one build and build demon implementation. Yeah. So we, 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 I'm better sure we could have an, 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 another talk in two years. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, can, we cannot talk for the vulnerable people. They, of course, need to do their work, but they can only start their work when we are done. So we are real soonish now, and then the vulnerable people will have fun and probably yell a bit at us. And then we will yell back, and at some point we have it sorted all out, and it yeah. may run automatically. So, and, and whoever want, wants, wants that to be last, um, uh, help is always accepted. And so we are out of time, yep. as I have the, the wonderful video team waving at me furiously at the back. Um, just a huge thanks to FTP Masters and everyone else who's been involved with this. It's really good to see that this is something that can finally come along. So thank you very much. Thank you very much.